Maybe you've been stressed out or felt uneasy about things happening both in your personal and professional life that felt outside of the normal range. You know, aside from the nervousness you would feel around a new date, giving a presentation, finances, or studying for an exam. Maybe you've told yourself, this is fine, or this is normal. But as time goes on, those feelings of uneasiness haven't gone away. In fact, they've stayed or potentially have increased. If this experience feels similar to you, then stick around because that's what I'm going to be discussing in today's video, anxiety. More specifically, when anxiety has become problematic and the diagnosis of generalized anxiety disorder, what it means, how to know if you have it, and what you can do to help mitigate your anxious symptoms. Hi, I'm Jordan Travers. I'm a licensed clinical psychotherapist and the clinical director of Awake Therapy, a non-subscription based online therapy platform. If you're interested in learning more about me and the Awake Therapy team, you can click on the link in the description to learn more about us or to book a free initial consultation. So let's start with the basic of what generalized anxiety disorder is, otherwise known as GAD, and how it's different from normal anxiety producing experiences. GAD is when we worry uncontrollably about a variety of things or when we're worrying and can't identify the source of what's causing us to worry for six months or more. Examples of things people with GAD experience include an increased startle response, low self-esteem and self-confidence, physical issues related to anxiety such as an upset stomach, high blood pressure, a rapid heartbeat, trouble sleeping and concentrating, and an inability to relax. So what causes GAD? Well, it goes back to that whole nature nurture thing we learned about in school and that I've discussed in previous videos. I like to say that there are a lot of little stones thrown at us before the big boulder comes crashing down. What I mean is that there's probably a variety of seemingly small factors that have compounded over time, which is causing or contributing to our anxiety. Things like a family history of anxiety, recent or prolonged exposure to a stressful event, health concerns like a thyroid issue, a hostile work or school environment, childhood abuse or bullying, and consuming too much caffeine and nicotine which has been shown to increase our feeling of anxiety due to how those substances interact with our nervous system. So you might be wondering, okay, I'm definitely experiencing those symptoms, so how do I go about getting a diagnosis and going through treatment? Good question. You can talk to either a mental health professional like myself or you could talk about your concerns with your primary care physician, psychiatrist, or for women, your gynecologist. Typically, treatment is a two-part approach that includes medication to help manage the severity of your anxiety symptoms and therapy to learn new behavioral skills. In fact, GAD has been shown to respond well to this therapeutic approach, especially when using therapeutic interventions like cognitive behavioral therapy, otherwise known as CBT, which works with the patient in identifying and challenging anxious thoughts and learning positive pro-social coping skills that help patients to feel calm. The reason why using this two-part approach is effective is because only MDs can prescribe medications and mental health professionals like therapists, counselors, and psychologists will work with patients on developing effective behavioral strategies. Having a doctor that you can trust and feel comfortable speaking openly and honestly to is hugely important because unlike depression, where psychiatrists typically prescribe SSRIs, anxiety is different in that it sometimes needs more than just an SSRI. Sometimes it needs a class of drugs known as benzodiazepines or benzos for short to treat the symptoms. And here's the thing about benzos, they're highly addictive and have been shown to increase our anxiety when we titrate off of them, which is just a fancy clinical word for meaning changes moving either up or down in a medication. And for the record, I am not a psychiatrist, so I'm gonna stay in my lane, 
But the one thing I will say, other than the fact that they're addictive, is that you absolutely should not drink alcohol while taking benzos because that could kill you. And that psychiatrists often prescribe SSRIs for daily management and benzos on a limited as needed basis. But as a therapist, I can tell you that other factors that have been shown to mitigate anxiety symptoms and improve our overall well being include eating more fruits and vegetables, focusing on establishing a sleep routine, and averaging seven to nine hours of sleep each night, exercising daily, increasing our face to face interactions and limiting things like caffeine and tobacco. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you found today's content both helpful and informative. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive updates when a new video is posted. And remember, platforms like YouTube are a wonderful resource for getting information out to others. However, it does not take the place of individualized psychotherapy. If you're in need of mental health assistance, whether to talk through an existing issue or to create a more prosperous and fulfilling life, you can book a free initial consultation using the link in the description. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye.